Hey, welcome to Electron Line, and here we have a more interesting problem. Again, it's a, a fraction on the left side that we call that a rational inequality. And here the rules are a little bit different, because here we have x plus 3 divided by x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1. And so the tendency is to try to work it out the way it is, but the thing you want to do is you want to move the 1 to the left side and turn the right side into a 0 because you always want a zero on the right side and everything else on the left side. So let's do that. Let's move the one over to the left side. So we get x plus 3 divided by x minus 3 minus 1 less than or equal to 0. OK. Now we want to go ahead and write this whole thing as a fraction. So we want to use the common denominator. You want to write it over common denominator. So this can be written as x plus 3 divided by x minus 3 minus x plus 3 Oop, not x plus 3, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by x minus 3. So we have the number 1 there, and we're going to multiply that times, and maybe I should use a, a different color so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 3 and the bottom by x minus 3. There we go. So I just introduced a fraction, x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1, but I do that so I now have a common denominator on the left side, and that is then less than or equal to 0. So now we can write both of those things on the same, over the same denominator. So we have x plus 3 minus x minus 3. Notice how we use parentheses so I don't make a mistake with negative signs. Divided over a common denominator of x minus 3, which is less than or equal to 0. And so now I can go ahead and simplify that. And notice that we have x minus x, which is 0. 3 minus a minus 3, which is plus 6 over x minus 3 less than or equal to 0 or simply 6 divided by x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So this is a better form of the inequality that we can try to solve. So now we're looking for all values of x which make this possible. So first of all we can say well we cannot have an, a 3 in the denominator, right? So before we do that though we're going to write the equivalent equation. We're going to write 6 divided by x minus 3 equal to 0. And of course, the reason why we did that is because we want to find all the critical points, all the points that define or delineate the regions that either satisfy or not satisfy the inequality. So here you say, well, what makes the left side equal to 0? Well, there's no value on the left side that I can make x equal to make the right side equal to 0. Because remember, when a fraction equals 0, that means the numerator must equal 0. So there's no value for x that makes x equal to 0. But we do have another point, x equals 3. Because x equals 3 will make the denominator undefined. 3 minus 3, of course, is 0, undefined denominator. So this is one of our critical points. It's what x cannot be. So x cannot equal 3. So that becomes our delineating point. That becomes our critical point that will then divide the number line into regions where we're going to try and find if any one of those regions satisfy the inequality. So we have the number x equals 0 and the number x equals 3. And of course, 3 is the value that x cannot be, which makes that a critical point. And we draw an open circle indicating that that's not part of the solution. But we now do have two regions. We have region 1 and region 2. And we're going to verify if either one of those regions satisfy the inequality. So what I do now is I go back over here and plug in uh, let's see here. I want to go back to this equation right here. I don't want this one right here. I want this one right here. And uh, we're going to find two points. Let's try the point 0 and the point 4. So we picked a test point in each of the two regions. We're going to, we're going to plug that into this inequality. So let's start with 0 and then end up with 4. If we plug in 0 for x, I get a positive number in the numerator, and I'll get a negative number in the denominator. And the question is, is that less than or equal to 0? And let's see here. If I divide a positive number by a negative number, I get a negative result, and that is indeed less than 0. So therefore, this satisfies inequality, which means 0 is in a region that satisfies my inequality. So therefore, x can be anything less than 3. Let's try the number 4. If I plug in a 4, I get a positive number in the numerator, because that's always positive. And when I plug in a 4 here, 4 minus 3, that's 1. 
that's a positive number. And so the question is, will that give me a value less than or equal to zero? And the answer is, of course, no, because a positive number cannot be less than zero, so anything to the right does not satisfy the inequality. This is not included in the realm of possibilities. So therefore, our solution then means that any number less than three does satisfy that original inequality. So what we can say is that when x is less than three, we have a number that will satisfy the inequality. You can do a quick check. Let's take the number zero, for example. If I plug in zero, I get positive three divided by negative three. Is that smaller or equal to one? And the answer, of course, is yes. A positive three divided by negative three is a negative one. Negative one is smaller than positive one. It solves the inequality. It's part of the solution. And that's how we find the range of values for x that satisfy this inequality. It's kind of an interesting problem. The first thing you might look at say, well, wait a minute. If I can never get a number that equals zero, no matter what the value for x is, then is there any solution at all? But you don't have to stop there. Just continue with the process. Continue finding the critical point, which there is only one. Then find the two regions. Find your test points. Then take those test points and plug them back into the inequality in this format where you have a zero on the right side. When you plug in the values, you realize that one of them, zero, did give you a solution. And therefore, anything to the left of three is part of the solution of this inequality, and that's how we do that.